Welcome back to another creative tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our talk about the Comics Manager Docker and we're going to keep it a little simple today with the project settings option. I've decided to split up the rest of this Docker in other videos because it is quite a bit between the project settings and the ad page and all that good stuff. So I actually don't need to open a file to go over the project settings with you, but I will be opening up a page so we can kind of go over a couple other things with the project settings. So first, if you don't know where the Docker is, you can go to settings, dockers, and comics manager. And then when you have that open, you should be able to open your project and wherever that file is, so mine is here, you can click on the JSON file and hit open and it will bring everything in associated with that project file. So now that we have that open, we're going to go to project settings and we're going to hit the little arrow down here. We're going to go to the actual project settings. So here we can look at the information that we set up when we first made this entire folder structure in the beginning in the last video. And that confirms where the pages are, where exports going to be, templates, all this good stuff. So if I go to the folder icon and I say, yeah, here's the pages that it's currently referring to. So whenever I add a new page right here to my comic manager folder structure, this is where it's saving them. So obviously this is just selecting a folder, so it's not going to show me what's in there, but I can say, okay, this is the folder I want. I hit select folder. It's all good. So now about this, if I wanted to let's say duplicate this, Paste that here. This is a big file, so wait a minute. Okay, so now that has copied over. It took a little bit because those files in there are big and there's quite a few. We're gonna rename this to pages line work. So let's say you are gonna be working with some other artists on this project and you want to say, all right, the thumbnails are done, the overall pencil work is done, whatever it is that was done in the beginning, now this is being passed on for line work. We can take this folder structure, we can say select this folder. So now all the pages are gonna be coming from that line art folder. Now nothing's changed here because the same pages and the same files are in that folder, but that way if you wanna keep your work very organized and very um, historical, so you have like a history of everything that's been worked on, that's one way to do it. I'm gonna put this back to pages because I don't want to start adding pages when I go back to work on this and put it in the wrong folder. Same with your templates, which we'll go over in the add page. We're going to hit cancel there. And the default template, which again, we'll go over in the next video when we talk about adding pages. So we're going to hit OK because I'm not changing the project name or the project comes concept. If I want to, I can. So I'm going to hit cancel. All right, so now we're going to go to the metadata. So this is very much all the information that's going to be about your project. So here we can put the title, which is in this case, the pumpkin prints. And I can put the summary of the, the whole story. Now, because this is like book one, I can say pumpkin prints book one, and I can say uh, pumpkin prints is uh, needs to discover his role and I'm trying to think on the fly if we're splitting this whole thing up. <laughs> and needs to solve a mystery. Okay. It's not quite what happens in the first part, but that's fine. So that's our summary. So here we can put the genre if you want, the characters, um, format, rating, like if this is for kids or not. I think, is there a drop down menu? Yeah. So if we can use the rating systems. So if we use the DC one, because I like DC better. Uh, let's see, maybe I don't have an extra one. Oh, there you go, fictionratings.com. Kids, older kids, teens, mature, mature adult. Oh, it's got little pop-up menus. I don't remember if that was there before. If it wasn't, cool. If it was, I just don't remember. And then Marvel content rating, all that good stuff. Inter oh, there it goes. Now the DC one happened there. It took a minute to load. So it has all this good stuff. With the series, value number, um, the number of the book, all that good stuff. It's not necessary, but if you are passing this on to someone who maybe needs to edit this, 
um, like an editor or proofreader or maybe you're sending it off to some fans early on maybe this information needs to be in the metadata it's up to you so under authors we have all the authors so it, by default it just says John Anon so if the nickname if they don't want to be credited publicly or maybe they're just you know like yeah I'll, I'll you know I'll look it over you can say oh their nickname is is blueberry bush fire something crazy you know whatever it is and then you can put the other information in there you can put email if you need to all that good stuff and this is also helpful if you um, are doing this by your by yourself you're like I need a place to keep all this information together I'm sending this to my beta readers and this is their contact information and you can also scrub this later so you can rub uh, remove the author um, and do all that good stuff later so under publisher, if you have a publisher for this, you can put all the, that information in there, the ISBN number for the book, the license, anything that's necessary for the publisher metadata. If you don't have one, you don't need to put that there, that's fine. So I'm gonna hit cancel, because I don't need to put anything in there, and I don't wanna accidentally turn something on. And finally, under project settings, we have the export settings. So when you're ready to export, this isn't, going to export anything, but if you want to set things up for a specific uh, format or size, you can crop this down. So if you want to crop down like 10 pixels or whatever, um, you can do that, set that up. You can take layers. So let's say you, if you are following me on my coffee page and you're a member for the behind the scenes content, you notice that sometimes I'll do red for the bubble, um, the word bubbles, so I can kind of get an idea of placement. Theoretically, I can go back and put all that on a red layer label. So I can go back and say I want that layer removed. And then we should be good, you know. And then these are other file formats that you may need. I believe these are older file formats, um, if I recall properly. Um, this is all optional. You don't need to worry about the export settings if you have a different method of exporting your finals. Um, through Krita. If you want to save it manually per page, that's totally fine. This is just something that might make it a little easier if you so choose to use the default export settings within Krita. Alright, so now that we're talking about the project settings and metadata and stuff, I'm going to quick go over how to add some information for the pages. So I'm going to open up the first page of this story. This will take a second here because um, is a very large file <laughs> okay so here is the file if I go to file and document information whew, uh, this is all the information that will be here so if you look here you can see no keywords I have a date stamp and no description and here in document information I have keywords subject and description this is important. So let's say I've, I have this file open and I have a lot of notes that I want to make on this page and I want to change it. So I, but I don't want to like have multiple notebooks, multiple spreadsheets, multiple everything. Cause that can get a little overwhelming. Now, if that's the way you work, totally, hey, no problem, no complaints. But maybe you just want to see real quick all of these pages and all the notes associated with them. Maybe you're handing this file, create a file off in this whole project management system to someone else to kind of proofread or, and, and they need to add in some notes. You know, this would be a perfect way of doing it. So let's say I'm an editor or proofreader or beta reader or whatever it is and I've been trusted with this file format or project folder, all that good stuff, and I need to go in and make some notes for this page. So under description, I can say, uh, create panels, however, please add clarification on transition between last two panels. Okay, and I can hit say, say okay. And then it's not gonna show up right away. But I can close that page. Um, uh, yes, we are gonna save it because we saved the description. So we're gonna wait for that to finish because it's a big file. And as soon as I close it and it saves, that that I just put in there shows up. So now I can go back as the artist and say, oh, okay, I got my feedback. Here we go. Here's all this information. You know, I can go make those edits or change it or whatever. 
All right, so we went over the project settings and the actual project settings, the metadata and export settings, as well as the document information and everything, all that good stuff for the individual pages and how to edit that within the project. Hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully I didn't go too fast. The next video for next week for the tutorial will be about adding pages. As you can see, there is a lot to go over and we will definitely be going over everything. That will be a longer video as a heads up. So bring a notebook <laughs> if you need to take notes. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments or anything, or you want me to go over something specific within the comics manager that I haven't gone over yet, or to clarify on, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to do that. And make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.